Hello and welcome to Wow in the Word. Ordinarily, we look at different wows which God put in His Word for us to find, but this is a special series in which I am practicing on being a coffee shop pastor. My name is Pastor Mark Vimmel. You can check me out over here during the week and on Sundays at zionmh.org, Zion Lutheran Church, great congregation. We'd love to see you on a Sunday or anytime during the week. You can also check me out over here at ubernew.org, where a whole bunch of your favorite pastors, including me, uh, are on there sharing the God's Word throughout the week, getting you from Sunday to Sunday, and you can put your prayer requests out there for the whole church to be praying for you. If this is your first video that you've seen on the Coffee Shop Pass, you might want to check out this one over here, where you can see how it all started and how it all began. But uh, if you're here for the weekly update, here it is. I realize that I don't have time to be a coffee shop pastor. I have so many different things that I have to do. I have sermons that I need to research and write. I've got Bible studies that I have to research and write. And, and lead. I've got bulletins, a weekly newsletter, a monthly newsletter, all sorts of meetings that I have to plan, I have to lead, I've got all sorts of events that I've got to promote, I've got to publicize, I've got to lead, I've got to recruit people to help out with, emails, Facebook posts, videos to edit. I just don't have time for Coffee Shop Pastor. And at first, classic Mark Fimmel way, I thought, no excuses good enough. Winners win and losers lose. The problem with that is it's a guilt. It's a law motivation. And when we're trying to command people or to guilt people into doing it, that's going to work, but only for so long. What really works for us is to see that we're about something bigger, something better. And that's when I realized with this coffee shop pastor, I could skip out and sure, no excuse is good enough. No excuse is good enough to turn my back on someone who is walking towards a life filled with suffering, filled with suffering. No excuse is good enough. But as the motivation, the motivation that Christ leaves with us, which is far better, is what great thing I get to be a part of. What great thing do we get to be a part of? You and me, we get to be a part of when God calls us to share the faith, plant kingdom seeds in the lives of the other people. I don't want to miss out on something good. I don't want to miss out on something fabulous. If I have ice cream in the freezer, I'm going to come up with any reason to eat it. Even more precious is the privilege to be the person, the mouthpiece of God to somebody to show them how great it is to be in the kingdom of God now, tomorrow, and forever. God invites you and me to do that. I want to share with you some of the things that I almost missed out on this week. Earlier this week, there was a woman, she works with troubled students, and she was very frustrated because uh, some of her students aren't turning out as, as wonderful as she had always hoped. They're continuing to make some bad decisions. I had the privilege to be the mouthpiece of God to this person, to help her see that even if she doesn't turn every one of her students into a teacher or a church worker or the next person to cure cancer and Alzheimer's, instead she is the person that God is using to keep them from being the worst version of themselves. Are they going to make bad decisions? Sure, but they're not going to make as bad of decisions as if they never had a compassionate person. I got to be that mouthpiece of God to share that with her. If I stuck with my excuses, I also would have missed out on a fabulous opportunity to meet somebody that pretty much everybody else would say is off limits. You can't talk to her because you can't change your mind. She was wearing a hijab. A hijab is a cover that Muslim women will wear that covers their uh, their hair and their neck and uh, uh, some of their face. Most people would look at somebody wearing a hijab and say, there's no way you could share the faith with them. So I introduced myself and I talked with her and I had this tremendous opportunity to have a conversation. She's here from abroad, so I got to learn about where she's from. Uh, I also got to learn about how the mosque dynamic works. Um, I also had the privilege to interact with her and discuss with her what my specialty is because she's also taking classes. I'm really excited about what uh, she's going to do with her education, uh, but I also got the opportunity to share that my degree field is a PhD in Biblical Studies, verifying that the miracles of Jesus are not just a, a fairy tale or something that uh, people don't uh, have any reason to think are true or accurate. Instead, I got to share with her just a glimpse of how even atheist historians, even secular history, has to acknowledge that Jesus did in fact do miracles that have no other explanation other than supernatural power. I could have stuck to my excuses and say, I'm too busy, I gotta get this newsletter done, but I said no, I don't wanna miss out on what God allows us to be a part of. 
And because I heard that voice and because I followed that invitation, look at the blessing I got to be in. I got to share the faith with someone from the other side of the world, someone that everybody else overlooks and is prejudiced against or, or makes value judgments against. I got to be that guy. And I did it in the name of Jesus. That's going to speak volumes to her. I also had a privilege to meet a man who has had a very full and enriched life, full of education, full of knowledge, uh, who's uh, troubled right now, going through some difficult things. And he actually came to me and asked me to help uh, him understand some Bible verses. Somebody asked me to talk about the Bible who doesn't even go to our church. How cool is that? If I listened to my excuses, I would have missed out on the blessing of not only sharing those Bible verses, but applying them to his life and allowing him to see the joy, the light, the comfort, the, the holiness, the compassion that Jesus has, even for us who struggle. A verse keeps floating around in my head. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. And it says there in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, And seek first the kingdom of God. And this is Jesus talking. He says, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. I know I've shared this verse with you before, but this is such a precious verse and it keeps floating around in my head. If we put the kingdom of God first, all the stuff we worry about, it's going to slide into play. But if we don't put the kingdom of God first, we're missing out on tremendous opportunities to be about what the kingdom has, has us here in this world to do. Personal story. This week I was working out in the gym, just like I've done for almost 20 years. And I heard a pop in my arm. No, it was bigger than that. Well, it might have been a little smaller than that. I heard it, I felt it, I even saw it all happen. One of those, one of those dreaded pops in the gym. I had my excuse. This was on Friday. I could have gone home and nobody would have been angry. Uh, I could have uh, stayed at work and gotten some other stuff done and nobody would have been angry because after all, one of my arms is broken. Apparently, I've ripped a bicep tendon. I'm going to have to have surgery. No one would fault me if I missed coffee shop pastor, but I would have. Because I would have missed out on a tremendous opportunity to have some of the conversations that you just heard about. We make excuses for everything. And I could say no excuse is good enough. But that's not how Jesus works. How Jesus works is he talks to you and he talks to me. And he says, here, the kingdom opportunities that we have, you get to be a part of God writing eternity. You and I get to be a part of God changing what happens to somebody, not just when they die, but when they get in a fight in their marriage, when their kids drive them nuts, when they get in a car accident, when they blow out their arm and need to get reconstructive surgery and can't work out for six months. If I don't make myself intentionally available to make relationships outside of the church, God will have to work around me. And I don't want to see that happen. If you don't intentionally find someone who's not a Christian to have a conversation with, to make friends with, God will have to work around you. And I don't think you want that either. Here's evangelism made easy. Consider this all we're supposed to do. Make friends with people who aren't Christian. And when they hang out with us, when they talk to us about their kids, when they talk to us about their families, when you talk to them about your families, about your struggles, about your life problems, they're going to hear how a Christian tackles those problems. So when you're going to church, you're getting ammunition for, for how to tackle the problems of the world. So that way, when you're talking to other people, you will have success stories instead of victim stories. Until Jesus comes back, this is why we're here. To see the kingdom of God, to savor how great it is, and then find ways to allow other people to see that kingdom of God in our lives to show them that kingdom of God. Check me out over here at zionmh.org. Zion Lutheran Church, great congregation. We're open on Sundays. We'd love to see you. We're also open during the week. and We'd love to see you anytime. Also, I'm over here at urenu.org where you can find me and all of your other favorite pastors uh, putting stuff on there during the week, getting you from Sunday to Sunday uh, so that way you're feasting on God's word all week long. And you get to share your prayer requests with the whole Christian church at large immediately 24-7. If this is the first Coffee Shop Pastor video that you checked out, you can check out how it all started over there at Coffee Shop Pastor. In the meantime, please check out the other videos on this channel because it'll definitely take you deeper into God's Word.